And welcome back. Now, the KwaZulu Natal Education Department yesterday released a publication titled KZN Learner Transport Policy 2020, and quite a lengthy document, but an important one all the same. The document comes after advocacy group Equal Education secured a court order in which the KZN Education Department undertook to provide scholar transport to learners at 12 schools in Ngutu by April 2018. Now, the KwaZulu Natal Education MEC Kwazim Shengu and Hopalang uh, Selebalo from uh, the um, research uh, institution, rather co-head of research at Equal Education, are in studio with us this morning to talk more about uh, this particular situation. So thanks to both of you for coming through. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. I want to start by getting everybody on board with the policy and what the policy says. And I'm going to give it to Hopalang mm -hmm. because I'm sure you would have read it with a very keen eye. Yes. Um, so we are currently going through the contents of the policy. Uh, we've been advocating for its publication for several years. Uh, members in the KZN province, uh, members of equal education in KZN had been citing the difficulties that confront them when it comes to access to education uh, due to um, a lack of scholar transport. You know, learners arriving to school tired, having walked for over two hours just one way, um, hungry uh, teachers uh, telling us that learners aren't able to concentrate in school um, and high rates of absenteeism. So we have been pushing since 2014 for the provision of scholar transport um, in the province overall, in the 12 schools in Mutu in particular, and for the publication of the policy. So um, the policy was meant to have been, as per the court order, and I'm sure the MEC knows, was meant to have been published on the 30th of January this year. Um, and, it, uh, and then we were written to by the MEC's office to let us know that it would be out for public comment on the 6th. And we received an embargoed copy on Monday as per the court order. Unfortunately, yesterday we found that the policy was not online. Um, it was an annexure to the policy that was put up on, uh, that was gazetted. But it's not, the, it's not the policy. It's not what the document that we received. And even and, and there was no there was no there wasn't clarity on how long it's open for public comment or anything like that. So these are the questions that we still have as we sit here. How long? When, how long is the public comment process? Why is the policy not online? Because technically it's not online. Um, and we are currently looking through the documents that we received on Monday. Well, fortunately, the MEC is here to give us those answers. Well, uh, let me first indicate that uh, there has been a point, in fact, there is a policy uh, of scholar transport in, in Guazulu Natal. What we have issued for, what we have gazetted for public comment, it's a review of the 2013 uh, uh, scholar transport policy. And we reviewed it to be in line with the national policy, which was issued in 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, we concede that uh, there should have been a uh, a quicker process to review that process, I mean, the, 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 the scholar transport policy, because the national one was uh, issued in 2015, and for about four years now, the department has not been able to, to align our provincial policy with the national policy. So to say that uh, uh, there has not been a policy in case that uh, uh, is not, uh, it's not uh, factual correct, what has not been done over the past few years, which has, should have been done, and that's my contention, was that we should have quickly aligned our provincial policy with the national policy, which is, is actually what we have done now. So the, the gazetted one, uh, I'm sure the technical errors or, uh, in terms of uh, up, uh, uploading the policy should, should be corrected uh, uh, speedily. But what, what, now, what, is it, what, what we have done so far is therefore to align and close the gaps uh, of the 2013 uh, policy, uh, scholar transport policy, because that one had a number of gaps, Akina, where which uh, then exposed the department into a situation where we will be transporting learners, which, in our view, we were actually not supposed to transport, as learners such as those that will prefer a particular school and live the nearby school. It did not say anything about uh, learners with disability. So in a number of areas, but including the delineation of responsibilities between Department of Education as well as Department of Transport, because policy determination resides with us as Department of Education as well as the funding. But because we don't have expertise in terms of the transport uh, part of it, we then worked together with Department of Transport to then be the managing uh, department insofar as uh, the implementation is concerned. I mean, 
I don't think it's fair to say it's factually incorrect that there was no policy. Um, when we started this campaign um, we, in, in 2014, um, we, we liaised with the, with the KZ and DOE. And we were told that a document that was up online at the time was not in fact a policy. This was a, it said 2013 uh, KZN policy. We're told a scholar transport policy. We're told that it's, that's that's a draft copy. That's not the policy. That's not what we're using because we were we were saying, are you using this policy policy to ensure the realization of the basically the provision of scholar transport for learners in the province? And I do echo the MEC's sentiments in terms of. Um, what we're looking for in this new draft. We, you know, we want a policy that will talk to alternative uh, modes of transportation where buses are not able to access certain areas in, in, um, in KZN. We want to, a policy that speaks to how the transport will be provided to learners with disabilities. Uh, we want to, a policy that speaks to our, around planning. Um, how do you accrue your data in terms of the number of learners that are in need? We know that uh, tens of thousands of learners that don't have access to, to, to scholar transport um, and only a very limited number are provided with that service in the province and to be fair, across a number of provinces, particularly in rural areas. Um, and we want to talk about budgeting as well. How, how, what is the plan to ensure that every learner in need is able to be provided with scholar transport. So, let me see how many learners are in need of scholar transport in KwaZulu Natal. And then, in response to Oblang's question, the budgeting process, you know, how much do you need? In terms of our records, we have about uh, 117,000 uh, learners that are uh, deserving to be provided with scholar transport. But because of limited funding, we are only able to provide about 58,000 learners across the province of Basel Natal. And that's come from the, the national grant of about 218,000. We wrote to the provincial treasury to request more funding. Uh, uh, we're able to get about 100 million. But if we're to transport everybody uh, who is deserving, or every learner who's deserving in Guazulu Natal, we need about a billion rand to run effective scholar transport in Guazulu Natal. Because Guazulu Natal is quite a rural area. Um, they, are, they, they, they are more concentrated around the area of Ngutu. There are a number of uh, areas uh, in Guazulu Natal. You go to Nkanta, you go to Mkanyagute, you go to Pula, a number of them where there are still learners who travel longer distances in order for them to, to access education. And uh, we, we, we are obviously confined uh, as a result of, of, of lack of funding. In our view as a department, we would love to obviously transport every deserving learner, uh, but uh, because of budgetary constraint, that is why so far we're only able to, to provide for about 58,000 learners. Is that a good enough answer though? Is this a question of we would love to, or is this a question of the rights of learners to access to education? The right of learners to access to education is not in dispute. Uh, where but we it don't is dispute if you that. can't get them to centres where they can access that education. It's, a, it's, a, it's an issue of uh, executing what, what you can within the, the, the available resources. Uh, as we would know that uh, we, we have been complaining about budgetary constraints. Let me make an example. Uh, we have added uh, scholar transport for, for learners who had, to, who had to cross rivers in order for them to access education. And that was outside the, 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 the budget for scholar transport. So we had to reprioritize within the baseline of the department, which means now there are capital projects that we can no longer be able to do because we then had to say, what, what is the priority? And in our view, the priority was that let's, let's, let's deal with this issue because it puts the lives of our learners at risk. So we had to reprioritize. There are projects that we had committed to do, which we can no longer do now. So it's not an issue of disputing the right of learners to education, to access to education, but it's rather an issue of the availability or lack of, of resources, as it were. I know you want to say something, Opala. Um, I mean, it brings to the fore the, um, a learner's right uh, to access to education, but also learners' rights to, to safety. Um, learners tell us that they walk... We, in fact, we, um, when we were in Lutu a couple of years ago, we, we tracked, the journey of, tracked the journey of a learner. Two hours over dangerous terrain, through, through rivers, you know, where, where learners are prone to violent crime, um, through inclement weather. Um, so it's, not, it's, it's education and it's also safety. 
And we hear this a lot in, when it comes into, in the education sector around budgetary constraints. Um, but I mean, there is it a valid concern, though? We do know that we've been seeing a shrinking budget in the education sector. So we would definitely, we've been advocating for um, a conditional grant around scholar transport. Right now it's funded through an equitable share. Um, and that's money that can be moved around, you know. So if, for example, the MEC decides to prioritize or the, the, KZN, the KZNDOE decides to prioritize that project over scholar transport, that's where the money will get shifted to. But with a conditional grant, then we know that particular money is earmarked for that particular service. And that's something that we've um, lobbied National Treasury around, uh, the, the Department of Basic Education around, that you need, this is, this is a critical component to the right of uh, education for learners, to their right to safety, to their right um, to dignity. Um, but I just want to go back to a point that the MEC made when he said that about 100, um, and 76,000 learners in the province uh, that uh, are in need of scholar transport. This is what we received in the report that was submitted uh, to the court and to us last year. The figure was initially 370,000 that we got from the department um, at the beginning of um, 2019. Um, so also these issues around data collection, we're worried that learners are falling through the gaps when a, sh when a figure shifts from, oh, we have 370,000 learners in our province that need scholar transport, to several months later, actually it's 176,000 learners that need scholar transport. Um, so there are a lot of dimensions that need, or a lot of issues and factors that need tightening to ensure that learners in the province receive scholar <coughs> transport, because this is, this is life. <laughs> this is life and death. But we're coming back to those budgets, um, MEC, and in terms of line items, where do you spend most of your budget as the KZN Department of Education? Well, uh, if you were to remove other conditional grants, 91% um, of our equitable share goes to the compensation of employees. And we still have to... Well, look, we're, we're quite a big department. Uh, we have 90,000 teachers in the system and that's outside the uh, public service employees. So 91%, if we were to remove uh, the calculation of a, a conditional grant, it goes to the compensation of employees. Then the, <coughs> the, the other percentage, remaining percentage, uh, goes then to capital projects like building of schools, uh, sanitation, uh, new schools, rehabilitation, and other projects uh, which, which, which we run as a department. Uh, we are currently trying to build an ICT package so that uh, we get along with time and that, that eats into the remaining uh, percentages it does. So it's quite a, a pressed budget that we, we operate within as a department. That's more than pressed, that sounds depressed. Mm. So given what you're telling us right now, you're realistically telling us that actually nothing can be done. We, we, we're not really going to see any serious shifts in, you know, or, uh, whether it be infrastructure, scholar transport, or anything like that, not anything significant judging by what you're telling us about your budgetary constraints? It means the pace within which we want to move will be hampered. Uh, we'll continue, obviously, to build But let's new not schools. play semantics. Let, let, let's not raise people's hopes unnecessarily. No. Let's tell people what the situation is. Yeah, as, as we say, like the situation, obviously, is not permitting for us to proceed with the speed which we want. Uh, we're no longer uh, in a business, really, of, of making... Uh, unrealistic promises. Uh, it's, one, it's one thing that I have taken bullet for as, a, as an MEC to say, we're not going to go around the uh, communities and say we're going to build schools, we're going to build schools. We will only make that commitment when there is a budget available. And that is why we're saying that, uh, it's, it's, as you're correctly saying, it's quite a depressed budget. But with this policy now, there may be uh, some, some, some saving, for example, that we'll realize, which will then an, an enable us to expand the program. As I said, there are, there are learners which uh, are transported to schools of choice. So they will be residing from this side, and there's a school nearby, but they will not want that school. They would want a particular school which is a bit far from where they, 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 they reside. And uh, currently there are cases where we're transporting that, those, those learners. In our view, those, should, those learners should not be a priority. Because it's a fine balancing act, mm, isn't it, though? Because uh, people do have the right uh, to go to whichever school they choose to go to. Mm. So it's a very fine balancing yes, act they, that you're going to have to do there. They, they do have a right, but uh, you, you must compare them with those learners who will not have any school of choice. 
will have to travel more than eight, ten kilometers for them to get to what in their in their own circumstances is the nearest school. Which makes it delicate because precisely it's a matter of rights and, and, mm. and how do you then decide which right supersedes the other um, in this instance? And, and and it would seem on face value that it's an easy decision to make, but rights are rights. Uh, Rights are rights, but uh, as we are saying that uh, we must then be able now when, when, when we are faced with reality and when we go into practice to say which one to prioritize. Do we prioritize a learner who goes to a school of choice or to prioritize a learner who has no school of choice within what is available in the system? Okay, we're running out of time. A few other things I want to touch on. Um, the, 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 the whole situation, the, the, the court ruling um, uh, around 2017 and... and, and the, you, uh, your department, uh, MEC Mshengu, was supposed to implement uh, that. But uh, just give us a little bit of background, very briefly, and then mm -hmm. I'll get the MEC to of respond. Course, of course. So in November of 2017, we went to court um, uh, where we asked the court to uh, compel the, the Department of um, Education in KZN to provide scholar transport to 12 schools in Mutu. Um, uh, by the 1st of April uh, 2018, and in fact that did take place. Um, we, also we were also asking the department to provide us uh, with um, a scholar transport policy that would exact speak to the issues that we've been talking about now, the, the budget, uh, how do you prioritize. You know, um, I said, like I said, there's a report that's submitted to the court, uh, two reports have been submitted to the court by the, by the department, and one of the reports says that there are about 117,000 learners that don't have, that need scholar transport, but don't have access to scholar transport. And I'm not, I'm sure all of them is, the case isn't about learners who choose a particular school and not another. I'm sure there are many learners in that pool that desperately need scholar transport mm. even to the school of, um, not necessarily the school of choice. But so how do you prioritize these learners? Um, the department did promise us that the policy would come out on the 31st of December 2018. That didn't materialize. Um, in 2019, there was a back and forth in correspondence until we decided to go back to court again to compel the publication of this policy. It was very disappointing yesterday to find an annexure and not a policy being up online. Um, this is an incredibly important moment. It's an urgent moment. Um, it's an urgent issue. Um, and we can't have any more delays around the publication of the policy. Uh, we can't have learners crossing rivers, um, young children as young as five crossing rivers. We can't have learners missing school because they can't get to school. And we can't have the department dragging its feet on this issue. And, and, and before you respond, MEC, you know, the optics around this, there are so many things going on that makes this unpalatable. Uh, that situation that you and I spoke about around uh, people being housed at Zimbali um, as they are adjudicating a tender process, is that still ongoing? And, and, and especially given the need that exists in things like scholar transport and infrastructure. Well, uh, my understanding was that uh, the explanation was given, uh, Sakina, that uh, indeed uh, there are people who are processing the, the, issue, the, the tender of NSNP who are, who are housed at uh, Zimbali, and that was approved by the provincial treasury after comparing the rates of different uh, institutions that were consulted. We must indicate that... Uh, that 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 there are, there are tons of of documents that have been submitted. I was told that it, there are over about thirty thousand documents that were submitted for 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 this process. And as government uh, departments, we did not have enough space. But also, it was an issue of security. You will remember that at some stage, uh, with the with the Department of Health, uh, the HOD at some stage was held at Ramsom at gunpoint, in fact by uh, some members of the so-called Amatela How big is business. a tender document? One of them. I think it's about 50 pages or so. It's quite a, it's quite a thick document. Pages. It's quite a thick okay. document. 30,000 so, of those? 30,000 of those. You think it's going to fill the studio? Uh, well, I haven't been there really to, 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 to see it because I obviously I don't want to be told but, that but I'm But I guess the point I'm driving here, MEC, is whether ethically you see nothing wrong with people staying at Zimbali since last year, October until February, adjudicating no. a tender process. Zimbali is, you know, a, 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 a very uh, affluent um, mm. establishment. So 
I'm worried that you see nothing wrong with no, that it's, particular situation. It's, not, it, it's in, it, well, let, let, let's, let's well correct, correct the, the facts. It's not that they have been staying there uh, since October. It's documents that are kept there. They will go there as and when they need to, to do work, which sometimes goes beyond... That's not what your beyond, HOD said. ...beyond going, uh, 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 working hours. So the issue here is not that uh, I'm saying there's nothing wrong or I'm saying there's something wrong there. I, I'm putting the fact at bay to say that process was above the board. They even consulted with the provincial treasurer to say these are the, the, the institutions that we have, which will have proper security for the documents and ensure that the process is, is processed timelessly and without anyone tainting the process as it were. So it's not an issue that uh, the department uh, did under the carpets or under the reps. I am advised that uh, the rates that we got from uh, where we are currently is not the normal rates of the, of the hotel that will, that will be charged when you go there. That's a new bit of information on that yeah. uh, particular score. But again, perceptions are all powerful. And the perception is that your department is spending money housing people for four months at Zimbali while children don't have a transport to get to school. Mm -hmm. That's the perception and that's something that you need to manage. We're going to Definitely. have to leave it there. Uh, KwaZulu Natal Education, MEC Kwasi Mshengu and Hopalang uh, Selibalo, the co-head of research at Equal Education, talking to us about the state of schools in KwaZulu Natal and focusing on uh, scholar transport and infrastructure challenges. The department yesterday released released a publication titled KZN Learner Transport Policy 2020 Equal Education saying it's an annex year. Let's bring you your latest news.